Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape! Designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are standing in the bedroom of an English inn. The sound of revelry coming faintly up the stairs. While in the shadows across the room from you, the gun in his hand already aimed at you, is an enemy agent whose success depends upon your death. Listen now as Escape brings you Ben Wright's story, Affair at Mandrake. This town, this beach, might have been wonderful in peacetime, I don't know. I never saw it before, but in war in 1940, it was hell. And on the map that I held in my shaking hands, it read Dunkirk. I stood by a burnt-out truck, weaving with fatigue, watching what was left of my battalion lurch like sleepwalkers onto the shell-swept dunes to await their turn on the little ships that were struggling so desperately to get them away and back to England. Major Baker! Over here, son, Major. We find the colonel. Afraid he's bought it, sir. Him and the old battalion order group. All of them? Yes, sir. Uh, One bloody shell. Nasty, very nasty. Uh, you want to look over the prisoners now, sir? I suppose so. Brigade still wants unit identification. Uh, this way, sir. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. I left them with the Lance Corporal of D Company. Here you are, sir. This bomb hole here. Right. Okay, you Nordic Superman, up on your bloody feet. Now get them lined up. Yes, we'll see what we've got. Prisoners! That man at the end, Holloway. Get him turned round. You, Go. face the officer. You I'm talking to. Turn round. That's more like it. Now we can... 30. 30 shots. Bit of hammer, you're... 30 shots. What in the world? Aber Herr Major, ich kann kein Englisch Wort verstehen. I don't understand English when you were born in England. Bitte, Herr Major. Holloway, shoot that man. Sir? Shoot him. No, sir. Then by heaven I will. No, sir, you can't. Leave sir, me. Stop it. You know it's against King's regulations to shoot a prisoner. You know it is, Major, sir. He's a traitor. I'll prove it to you. Get his service book. Yes, sir. It says 30 shots. Born London, England, doesn't it? No, sir. It says here, Wilfred Dorf, born Bremen, sir. Dorf? I could have sworn that... Dorf? Wilfred Dorf? Yes, sir. All right, Holloway. Must have been mistaken. Give him back his book. Now, I want the prisoners placed nearer the sea. Last chance of them making a bolt for it that way. Then I want you... And I, I want you to see that all of the ranks are fully equipped. What they don't have already, they can pick up off the beach. Right, sir. Yes, sir. Corporal, get them prisoners down nearer to the sea. All right, John Major. Come along, Holloway. Excuse me, Major, but who did you think that prisoner was just now? My best friend, Holloway. Best friend, sir? German? Yes, blasted Holloway, my best friend. Sorry, sir. That's all right, Holloway. I'm tired. We all are. I made a mistake, that's all. I uh, wasn't really going to shoot him, you know? No, sir. Major Baker, sir. Navy's just signaled for us to embark. All right. Acknowledge. Yes, sir. Battalion will move off by companies. A company leading. Single file, five-yard interval. Deliver that order to platoon leaders. Yes, sir. You married, Holloway? <laughs> Not half, sir. Ten years now and three nippers. <laughs> they would be glad to see you. Oh, I should say so. You know, I've always thought of the old trouble and strife talking too much, but <laughs> after this little lark, she'll seem like a blinking deaf... Come on, sir, let's get off this flaming beach. We left...
left Dunkirk blazing behind us and the Navy took over. Then England again, and finally the blessed release of two weeks' leave. But it was a short-lived happiness, for on the sixth day I was ordered to report to the war office. General Ballister, sir. Ah, uh, Baker, yes, of course. I sent for you, didn't I? Oh, Baker, congratulations. I beg your pardon, sir? On your military cross. I haven't got it yet, eh? Well, it'll be long. That was a good show in France, Baker. A fine rear guard and a properly equipped battalion when you came ashore. Deserve your MC. Thank you, sir. Thank me, rubbish. Deserve it. Now, what do you know about rockets, Baker? Well, sir, I was interested in them uh, pre-war as a possible method for postal delivery. Oh, that's right. I have it here in your record. Ah, uh, attended experimental meetings in Germany, eh? Y yes, sir. My best friend and I... Well, it interested me. Yeah. Well, come here. Have a look at this map. Sir? Ah, Mandrake Forest. Full of rockets. Our rockets. ak ak and anti-personnel. Oh, the Germans think they're very clever with this sort of nonsense. We think we're a bit brighter. Mandrake Forest. I see. Baker, I want you to command a group at Mandrake and carry out field tests. Can't give you more than a battalion for the job either. I'm giving you the job because of your record and because you know about rockets. Now, what's your main problem? Security? Exactly, security. The enemy knows we're up to something and he'll do his best to find out what it is. It'll be quite a job, sir, with only a battalion. Uh, all you get with your colonelcy, of course. Uh, take it? Of course, sir. Ah. Thank you. Oh, uh, one thing, sir. Huh? May I have my old regimental sergeant major with me? Holloway knows the way I work and he'd be very good value. Oh, we'll arrange that immediately. Is that all? I think so, sir. Good, that's it then. Except for a word of warning. Sir? From now on, Mandrake will be a number one target for enemy agents. Mandrake and you. Yes, sir. Your life, and more important still, our chances of winning this war depend on how well you do at Mandrake. I'd already thought of that, sir. I'm sure you had. Well, then, I suggest you spend the last of your leave by having a look around that district. Uh, make your appreciation and so on, eh? Oh, yes. And uh, dine with Barbara and me tonight, eh, Guy? I'd love to, sir. Ah, splendid. 8.30, then, blitz permitting. Oh, and do me a favor, will you? Of course, sir. Don't mention rockets, eh? Uh, Barbara's all right, really, but Pongo's awfully touchy. Pongo? <laughs> yes, the bloody dog. Oh. Right. <laughs> right, sir. <laughs> and thank you. The dinner was excellent, as was the courvoisier. So it was well after midnight before I said goodnight to the balusters and made my way slowly towards my flat in Cranmer Mews. The darkness was absolute. No searchlights, no raid, an almost irritating hush. And then as I turned into the mews, I saw it. A chink of light coming from my own window. I moved quietly, yet as quickly as possible, up the steps and stopped suddenly. My door had been forced. I eased it open wider and stepped through. There was a ribbon of light from the study. Then, as I slowly edged closer... <laughs> I came to where I had fallen in the hall. Head pounding, I got to my feet and opened the study door. The room was in chaos. Chairs ripped open and papers littering the carpet. Bookshelves empty. Pictures pushed aside. Quickly, I pried open the tightly fitted false bottom to the bureau drawer. My most secret documents and books were untouched. The film of chalk dust with which I had sprayed them, unmarked. If it had been a burglar... He got what he came for. If it had been the enemy, then they'd not discovered what my mission was. Hello. Uh, Guy, sorry to disturb you. Ballister here. Oh, yes, General. Got another blister for you, I'm afraid. In what way, sir? Uh, just after you left, I got a toll call from Pig Spooner. Caps commanding a prisoner of war camp just outside your new area. Yes, sir? Yes. Thought I ought to tell you. Well, Pig was livid. It said that two days ago, six of his POWs made a bolt for it. His patrols have brought in five of them, but one is still swanning about scot-free, bloody well vanished. 
Got a description of him, sir? That's why I rang up. Light is about uh, 32, medium build, but tall, pale face, black eyes and hair. I'll keep my eyes open, sir. Uh, anything else? Yes. Big thinks he must speak fluent English and know the country well. Uh, oh, yes. The fellow's name is Wilfred Dorff. <laughs> I left London the next night, and as the train crawled towards Mandrake, under the nightly blanket of shellfire and bombers, I thought of my new command, of the rockets, and how they could change the whole face of the war, properly used and in the right hands. And I thought, too, of Wilfred Dorff, whom we'd captured at Dunkirk, the man I'd mistaken for my oldest friend, Ferdy Schatz. Ferdy's parents had been German, certainly, but he was a British citizen until he had gone to Berlin in 37 to finish his studies there. And if Dorf was Ferdy, why had he refused to recognize me that day? Shame? Fear? Why? Why change his name? In any case, I'd soon find out, for somewhere in the forest of Mandrake, he was loose. And then, much later, I was stepping off the train into a driving, stinging rain at Mandrake Halt, where Sergeant Holloway met me with a staff car. And in a matter of minutes, we were driving away from the station toward the little town of Mandrake. The adjutant sent his apologies for not being here, sir, but the camp's a mess and he couldn't get away. Thanks, Holloway. Well, they posted you quickly enough. Too true, sir. <laughs> Hardly had time to get my pack off. <laughs> Camp's a mess, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the adjutant suggests the Red Lion pub in the village for you, sir, till we, till we get settled a bit. He's warned him, sir. Cheer up, Holloway. It's not as bad as all that. No, sir. Well, at least we're home. Yes, sir. But if you'll forgive me saying so, it ain't much better than the beach of Dunkirk. How was your wife, Holloway? Talky, sir. Very talky. <laughs> well, this is it, sir. The Red Bloody Lion. The camp's number is Mandrake 45 if you want the staff car for reconnaissance. Fine. Thanks for meeting me, Holloway. How about a drink before you go back? Oh, it's very good of you, sir, but the science mess managed to get a couple of barrels of Scotch ale last night. <laughs> they only have bitter here. Yeah? Right up. Uh, off you go. Good night, Colonel. Good night. Colonel Becker, isn't it? That's right. I'm Alfie Bingo. I've been expecting you, sir. Your adjutant gave us a buzz, and we've the best room put by for you. Number six on second floor. Has to eaten out yet, sir? Well, I did have dinner in London, but... But um... they're still a bit peckish and all, eh? <laughs> yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Well, don't you worry, sir. I told old lady to put by half a blood pudding and some green gauges for afters, eh, just in case. That sounds fine. Yeah, I'll take your valise up for you, sir, and the bottle of Jameson's Irish the adjutant sent along. Eh, you just stop into it by a parlor. Mrs. Olsevian there. Right, thank you. Colonel, uh, sir. Mm -hmm. oh, I do hope you won't put us out of bounds to your chaps just because you're top secret and all. Where did you hear that? Well, it's a sort of gossip, is all right. Sort of gossip, like. Let's talk about it some other time, shall we? In the meantime, how about the food? Of, of course, sir. Right away. Right away. The bar parlor was warm and crowded, and Bingle's food far better than I'd hoped for. After I'd eaten, I sat for a while over a couple of glasses of port. I was tired after the journey north. Bingle's remark about being top secret irritated me, so that when the singing began, I started up to my room. Hello, Guy. Thirty shots. Sorry about this. Artillery, but we have to talk, and I remembered your little outburst at Dunkirk. It seemed wiser to take no chances. And you were. Wilfred Dorff. Yes, that's right. The sort of melodramatic thing one is forced to do only in wartime, thank heaven. Now, you listen to me. Guy, please, don't get yourself in an uproar. 
Pour a couple of drinks like a good chap, will you? And then we'll talk. Uh, you probably have a service revolver in your valise. But I'd rather you didn't try to get it. Hey, drinks over? Here you are. Thanks. Ah, huh. That's more like it, eh? Yes. And I can't tell you how grateful I was when you didn't positively identify me at Dunkirk, Guy. I'll bet you were. Uh... Well, you see, it was essential that I get to England with Germans and as a German. What else are you? Captured you myself, didn't I? You a British subject in a German uniform? Now that you've escaped, you've come to me to beg a favor. How long do you think you can trade on old friendship? You're an escaped prisoner of war. Guy, let me explain. Go on, then explain. You have the gun. All right. Firstly, we are very well aware of the importance of your new command. We, oh, we. The Germans. Germans, my foot. British military intelligence. British military. You? With MI5? That's right. Guy, Guy, do you remember my farewell party at the Dorchester in 37 when I was leaving for Germany to finish my education? I remember. What about it? Well, intelligence knew war was coming then, sooner or later. And because of my German parentage, they sent me there as a plant. What? Guy, I'm not an escaped prisoner. That was arranged by courtesy of military intelligence. I expect the commandant of the camp is furious, but then sometimes you can't let the left hand know what... Suppose I did believe you. What are you doing here? Well, we feel sure that one of the top German agents is now or will be in this area. Target? Mandrake's new rocket command, and, of course, its commander, you. Who is this agent? We don't know. Yet. I see. Do you know what he looks like? We don't know that either. You know very little for someone that supposedly works for military intelligence. Oh, I see. All right, here. Here. This is the only identification I carry. Look. It doesn't mean a thing. Guy, you don't think... I don't think, Ferdy, I know... Those credentials are forged. Forged? Are you out of your mind? How credulous do you think I am, Ferdy? Now listen, Guy, I need your help. Our friendship's finished. Done. You see, you're on one side. I'm on the other. You better go while you still have that gun, because the next time I find you, I'll kill you. Guy. You always were pig-headed. All right, then, a drink for the road, hmm? One for our friendship that was... As I poured his drink... He came toward me, smiling, his gun in one hand. Then as he reached for it, I flung the raw whiskey straight into his eyes. And as he spun away from me, half-blinded, I leapt at him. He was trying to bring the gun round on me. I brought my heel down hard on his hand. And the gun skittered away, out of reach under the wardrobe. Then his left hand chopped me hard across the throat. Through a choking haze, I reached the bed. Lord opened my valise, swung my revolver towards him as he came toward me. Then I fired. I knew I knew I'd hit him, but even so, he was able to wrench the gun from my hands, race for the door, and slam it shut behind him. By the time I got to my feet and had the door open, Ferdy had a good lead. I took the stairs as fast as I could, but down in the parlor, I saw only Bingle, open-mouthed and a blur of excited faces. Through the blackout curtains... At the front door were half a jar, and Ferdy Schatz was gone. And as you know, Colonel, three days later, Ferdy Schatz was dead. Captain Harper, I suppose for you chaps in MI5, this is run of the mill. But for me, the whole thing has been a nightmare tragedy of errors. Killing one's best friend is, well, not too pleasant. As I quite understand, Colonel. In time of war, friendships are set aside when one's country is being attacked. And I thought Ferdy Schatz was doing just that. Now that I know he was working for MI5, I... Well, I... Uh, Didn't he tell you that military intelligence had sent him up to Mandry? Yes. Didn't he show you his credentials? He did. But at that time, I felt sure they were forged. Oh, I see. Look, Captain Harper. On the beach at Dunkirk, I capture this man. 
Later, I am told by General Ballister that he has escaped the POW camp. And still later, I find him in my room holding me at the point of a gun. And what did he tell you he was doing there? He said he'd come to Mandrake because an enemy agent was supposedly in the area. He wanted my help in, in, in turning up something. It's all easy enough to understand now, but don't you see, Captain Harper? At the time, I thought I was doing my duty. I had no way of knowing for sure that he was a British agent. The whole thing has been a frightful tragedy. Oh, yes, it is tragic. Perhaps most of all because those shots got to one of our men before he died. He never knew he'd found the evidence he wanted. I don't understand, Captain Harper. Colonel, you were able only to fire once. That's correct. Before he grabbed my gun and ran. Yes, and lost himself in the blackout. That's right. I never saw him again. Or couldn't find him. Is this your gun? It could be. I rather imagine it is, Colonel. Shots gave it to us before he died. Well? You fired only one shot from your revolver, the shot that killed Ferdy. Yes. That's true. And during a regulation ballistics check, we found the remaining five rounds of your revolver held not powder, but rather microfilms with a complete German code necessary for your activities here at Mandrake. Colonel Baker, you're under military arrest as a Nazi agent and for espionage against His Majesty's government. Shall we go? Under the direction of Norman MacDonald, Escape has brought you Affair at Mandrake by Ben Wright, starring John Daner. Featured in the cast were Ben Wright, Richard Peel, Parley Bear, Joseph Kearns, Gary Montgomery, and Lawrence Dobkin. Your announcer, George Walsh. The special music for Escape is composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week. You are groping your way through the belly of a sunken ship, a fortune and pearl secured to your belt. While above on the ship that tends you, working the pump that sends air to you, is an adversary whose plans include the taking of your pearls and your life. So listen next week when Escape brings you John Russell's story, The Adversary. Today, radio station WDNC in Durham, North Carolina, celebrates its 20th birthday and its 20th anniversary as a CBS radio affiliate as well. Happy birthday, station WDNC, and many more happy listening birthdays to all the listeners in the greater Durham region from more than 200 CBS radio affiliates from coast to coast. Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons, is heard Friday nights on the CBS radio network. <laughs>